Hey, what's going on everybody? So for today's video, I'm gonna do a recap of my experience at the 2021 KBF and Legion of Anglers Snakehead Shootout. I'm gonna cover my experience with pre-fishing, my experience during the tournament, what I think is a difference between the different types of presentations that Snakehead in Maryland and Snakehead in Virginia prefer based on what I've seen. And we'll get into the gear, what worked, what didn't, who won. We'll get the award ceremony. You'll see us over there with Chad Hoover and everybody who came out to it. But with all that said, let's get to today's video. Midnight, are, are you gonna do this video? Like, are you, you're, you're all over my laptop too? Come here, man. All right, hey folks, how you doing? So first things first, folks. When it comes to the tournament, my first major concern was pre-fishing and scouting out different areas. And that's because really, I haven't fished the Potomac really hardly at all. Prior to this tournament or pre-fishing, I've been there maybe four times, maybe? At most, at most for Snakehead. And of those times, almost all of them had been like over on Madawan. And I really hadn't done all that great for Snakehead. You know, pick up one or two here and there. But Madawoman is not what it used to be in 2012, 2013. The numbers of Snakehead just, they aren't there. I'm not saying they're not there. I'm just saying nothing compared to what they used to be. So for my pre-fishing, I went out twice and I didn't really do all that well. <laughs> I didn't do that well at all. I found some very likely looking structure, but all I landed were bass. I did miss one really big Snakehead. Let's give you a shot of that really quickly. Yes! Oh! No! No! And here as well are a bunch of the videos from when I was catching those bass. I mean, the SS Custom Baby Cobra, that spinner bait, it was killing it for those bass. Absolutely killing it. Yeah, that's a nice bass. Oh, it's a nice bass. She crushed the American Snakehead Custom Spinner Bait. There she is. There's a nice bass. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's been hard going out here, folks. I missed that one big snakehead earlier, right next to the boat. Other than that, I really haven't had any snakehead hits. I think I've seen a few spook, but that's really been it. I just could hardly find any snakes. So since I really didn't find any snakehead during that pre-fishing, aside from the one that I saw and missed, I wasn't really sure where to go. So I picked a nearby creek that I thought wouldn't be able to be bow fished ever, and I was correct about that. I picked that nearby creek and I decided to go there. So then what happened on the day of? Well, I got there to this one put-in point and I couldn't launch because the water was that low. It was just radically low. So I couldn't even launch there. So I go, awesome. Yes. So I go back to a different launch point. When I launched from there, I saw a sign that said, hey, don't go in the water, don't fish. There's been a sewage spill. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> you've got to be kidding me. Anyway, I spent the first hour after the launch just pedaling my kayak, my old town 2018 Predator, all the way over to where I wanted to fish, off the main stem of the Potomac. Finally made it there, didn't see anything until about 10 in the morning, and then I got this one right here. I've been throwing just about every frog in my arsenal up to this point. Finally put on the Acor and I've gotten a few follows, and then uh, one tried to get it and missed it, wouldn't come back. <laughs> and then this one followed it forever before she was willing to take. And there we go. There she is. All right. Thank you, beautiful. Let it go. And there she goes. Yes. Whew, finally. Now, it took me a really long time to crack the code, but here's a recurring pattern that I saw that really illustrates a difference between Maryland waters, like, I would say, like, central and northern Maryland waters, the eastern shore, and then southern Maryland and Virginia fishing. And that's the snakehead down there, at least in my experience lately, have really been liking presentations that are a little bit faster almost like on a steady slow retrieve or steady moderate retrieve, even for your top waters. It was weird. Now, while it did help me pick up some fish here and there, what it didn't help with was them missing it. 
deeply. I've never had Snakehead miss this much in my entire life. Over the span of my two days down there, like on day one, there was a period right after I caught that one I just showed you, where I literally had like 10 blow-ups, eight or 10 blow-ups in the span of 45 minutes, and none of them hit the lure. None of them. They all missed it by that much. It doesn't even take into account how many I spooked, but I just couldn't believe it. Like they were missing, missing, missing. Like you're killing me. You're killing me. They just kept missing it through this thick grass. And on that note, the other thing that I'll let you know is that I had most of my luck in thick grass, not the pad fields. I found most of my fish in thick grass. So anyway, I finished day one. I almost had the biggest fish. I had the biggest fish all the way up until the last half hour of checking photos in. And then there were two other submissions that took big fish on the first day. So that kind of bummed me out. But anyway, at least I was on the board. Of the 40 competitors on the first day, I think less than 20 had fish checked in. I mean, that fishing was tough, tough fishing. And we had a cold front and rain come in right before our tournament. It was, it was tough. But anyway, then we moved into day two. On day two, because I had a hotel down in Virginia, I was like, okay, I'm probably gonna fish Virginia waters. I have to make it to the award ceremony. I can't afford to drive at least an hour and 10 minutes north to the Maryland waters I had fished the previous day. Just wouldn't have worked out time-wise. So I fished Virginia waters. And out there, oh God, it's just, it was the same story. You know, I managed to link up with one more snakehead out there. I'll show that one to you right here. But after that fish, you know, I just, it's the same thing. Just tons and tons of blow-ups, like over like 20 blow-ups on that day where they just completely missed the lure. Then they had seagulls dive bombing and attacking my topwater lure. I had one hit the topwater lure just as a snakehead was sharking it and scared the snakehead off. I mean, it was one thing after another out there. When I tell you this was a tough tournament, it was a tough tournament. I had one that was well over 15 pounds come out of thick grass, just huge wake, sharked at it, bit at it, missed it by about that much and spooked off. And it was just that repeating itself, either that or no hits at all repeating itself throughout the whole day. <laughs> so, but anyway, I did manage to land two fish and those two fish were good enough to put me in second place. Had I landed even one more 20 inch fish, I could have taken it all. But you know, if coulda, woulda, all of that, Everyone has that in the tournament. So honestly, I just feel like I'm fortunate to have done as well as I did because it was tough out there. I feel like a lot of people don't necessarily comment on this, but when you're trying to stay super focused and apply the same level of effort to what you're watching, to what you're doing, where you're casting, how tight to cover, looking for all these nooks and crannies and details and watching for movement. When you're trying to stay that mentally focused for that long, it is draining. It is absolutely draining. So like the thing I always tell you all to do, bring snacks for when your morale gets low, make sure you do that <laughs> because it definitely helped me out. There was two times, one time each day, I stopped fishing for at least five or 10 minutes because I was getting frustrated, sat back, ate snacks and just observed my environment. And it, it really helped me discover a pattern that was at least good enough for me to put two fish in the boat and pull down that silver. And the other thing I want to show you here is the award ceremony. The award ceremony was over there with Chad from KBF and a bunch of the guys and gals who came out for the tournament. And we had a great time. We had a great time at Highmark Brewery. Thanks very much to Highmark Brewery for hosting our event. It was great to meet everybody who came out. Hope to meet the rest of you at the next tournament we have for an award ceremony. And congratulations to all the winners out there. So the big fish winner on day one was Justin Langren with a 31 inch fish. The big fish winner on day two was Andrew Edwards with I think was a 28 or 28 and a half inch fish. And then in third place, third place with an asterisk, we had Rashawn Hunt, fellow captain Legion of Anglers. If you don't know, Rashawn actually had this tournament won. He actually caught a third fish that was I think 28 and a quarter, but in the process of the fish thrashing around as he was trying to get the photo, he ended up cutting himself, the fish was bleeding, he was bleeding. Long story short, his identifier tag got bent up underneath the fish so he couldn't see it. So the catch got DQ'd, otherwise Rashawn would have taken first. No! Then you had me in second, and then you had Mr. Neven Reeby, Boomerang Fisher, in first. So congrats to everybody out there. Thanks for coming out for our first ever Snakehead Shootout with KBF and the Legion of Anglers. And 
keep an eye out because we actually still have a couple tournaments this year. And we'll have next year's tournament schedule coming to you. So if you have questions, let me know. I'll leave the award ceremony at the end of this video. Other than that, thanks much for watching, folks. Please like, share, and subscribe. And have a good one. Yep. Right, so the big fish for day one, taking home a thousand dollars, is uh, Mr. Justin Larkin. Uh, yeah. There you go. Woo. 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 Day two big fish, twenty-eight and a quarter. Mr. Andrew Edwards also taking home a thousand dollars. Yeah, buddy. Yeah. Alright, in fourth place with 47 and a quarter inches taking on 223 bucks, Mr. Chris Diggs. Chris you here? Here we go. So in third place, taking home 496 bucks and uh, one of these checks and we'll lick his wounds for ever. <laughs> <laughs> doing the math on this minus what he could have won. Inches, Mr. Rashawn Hunt. Yeah. Insult to injury, but actually injury. Day and days and how the event went and how you should have won the money. <laughs> second place first because we always end up crowning the champion and then second place doesn't get to talk at all and gets no love uh, even though second place is pretty dang respectable so in second place with 47 and a half inches taking home a thousand seventy four dollars old snakehead jesus right here <laughs> different down here in Virginia up to Maryland. Now, up in Maryland, I do a lot more pausing over a lot longer time. Up here, they wanted a fast retreat. The one I got today was on the honker. Had some other blow-ups. I never had so many blow-ups in my life where the snake had missed it as I did over the past two days down here. But, you know, it is what it is. He had fun. It was a lot of hard work, and I appreciate all y'all coming out. I know it's been a tough two days of fishing, so thanks for sticking through it, coming out here. All right, all right please. So with 65 inches, the champion for this event who's taken home the $5,000 guarantee payout, plus the $1,000 highest qualified angler, plus the $500 you know, bonus, who I might twist his arm to help me pay this beer tag. <laughs> Neven, there you go, brother. Yeah. Exactly like you know what I'm saying. If you're looking at social media, it's kind of yours to lose. You know what I'm saying? So the floor is yours, my friend. Talk about it. All right. So um, my first time fishing in Virginia. Um, I caught a water fish on the popcorn frog. Y'all know how to get it. Yeah. 
It was, it was a tough day. Uh, like Steve said, fishing fast, uh, breaking the weed lines. Um, what really came handy for me was the, the trolling motor. Yeah. <laughs> I bet it is. Yeah. I bet it is. I'm going to Much respect to everybody that competed, though. Seriously. Congrats, bro. Yes, sir. Congrats, man. Big thank you guys to for showing up. Um, I want to get pictures of everybody with their checks before y'all take off. Um, do me a favor, on your way home tomorrow for the next month, take some of your archive photos, post them on social media, talk about this event, uh, tag staff, Tour Stafford VA in there. I'll make a post about it, so if you can't remember what it is, just go to my social accounts and just copy basically what I say. And uh, that's how we get this kind of support. That's how we get to come back to these amazing places. But what it really boils down to is that you guys are running these groups that are that are cultivating the following for Snakehead. That you're cultivating the respect for the fish as a game fish. Um, you know, big shout out to Elmer. I reached out to him and I said, hey dude, I've caught a lot of Snakehead down south. Uh, I've never caught a Northern. This is like four years ago. I'm coming to film a TV show. I want to catch a Northern. Dude, like, made the show because he caught one and I didn't. I had like five misses that day and I finally, he was kind of like, hold up, dude, look. I got this. <laughs> Went in there and hammered the fish. Uh, every year since then, he's been gracious enough to show me places, take me places, told me about a place that we took uh, John from Yak Attack, who's one of the big supporters of this. Dude caught the biggest snake I've ever seen. Like, even mm -hmm. bigger than anyone I've seen <laughs> bow fish. And I've seen some monsters that people have shot with a bow. Uh, everybody from the Legion of Anglers was there. It was kind of cool. That video, I think, turned out amazing. Yes, it did. Um, the people that watched that video go, dude, I never thought about snakehead that way. I thought it was a trash fish. I'm like, well, go ahead and come up to Virginia anytime from like May to right about now and throw a top water in pads anywhere. And uh, you're going to catch one and then tell me it's a trash fish. Because I went to Crow's Nest last year and caught a 12 pounder like off the floating dock. <laughs> now that floating dock says no fishing, but I was catching, so I figured that would be <laughs> And the guy came up and he's like, hey, uh, there's no fishing here. I was like, bro, I got a fish on, I'm catching. He was like, <laughs> he's like, I can't argue with that logic, and he left me alone. But the fishing here for these things is ridiculous. Every little muddy, shallow, nasty thing that you can't catch anything else in except gar, is usually got snakehead in it. For the knuckleheads out there that don't night fish for snakehead, something's wrong with you because the night fishing for these things is like a whole different experience. You gotta learn how to cast at night. You gotta learn how to not hang up at night. But I mean, honestly, seeing that wake and hearing the blow up at night is just phenomenal. This is a very unique place in my opinion where you've got world-class bass fishing. You've got cat fishing that is so good it's annoying. You can catch so many catfish here. So for you, the skunkaholics that come to tournaments and barely catch fish, come here because you're going to catch fish. It might not be the right fish, but you throw a chatterbait anywhere from the northern part of the county all the way to anywhere else. Now, if you come here and don't catch a snakehead, a bass, or a catfish, maybe golf is in your future. That's right. <laughs> or ping pong or something like that because not necessarily now, but in the summertime, this place is unreal. But man, thank you guys so much for showing up. Uh, this is awesome. A lot of times, even in some of our bigger events, we don't get this percentage of people to show up to the award ceremony. So I appreciate y'all that didn't place coming here to show support for the people that did, and uh, and that's amazing. So one more round of applause for all these guys that play. Anyway, thank you guys for showing up, and uh, for y'all that placed, come over and let me. Uh, I'll think for you real quick. Okay. So, before we get out of here, the one thing I really want to do is take a minute and say thanks to Chad. Because Chad comes from the bass world. And if you know the bass world, you know a lot of guys out there in the bass world have real negative thoughts about snakehead. So for Chad to come out here with KBF, organize the events, put all of his things on the line to make all this happen, and get the payouts that we've all benefited from right here, we all owe him a big round of applause. Take it mainstream, snakehead will get there, but it's only going to get there with the help of people like Chad and all of us. So on behalf of the Leeds, on behalf of all of us, appreciate Chad. Hey,
special, but I want to say this for all of you guys that are leaders in this industry. The right thing is the right thing. Period. And to respect a fish, to respect a fishery, and to take care of it and preserve it, and to take a, a negative, if you want to call it that, even if it was a negative, and to spin it positive, is what we all should be looking to do. And I feel like I didn't do anything real special other than to say this fish is a, uh, an amazing sports fish. It is not what it's vilified to be. Let's celebrate it and let's focus on making people see it that way. And you guys are the real champions that are doing that day in and day out. I take some a little bit of flack on the side. We're going to move some smoke snakehead. And then they are off to bash somebody else. You know what I mean? <laughs> um, but other than that, I appreciate this. I appreciate you guys showing up. But listen, whatever's the right thing is the right thing. And we need more of us to say what's right. And I do what I want to do and I do what I believe in because that's really what's right. And, you know, coming from a, a, a veteran background and then, you know, going from being blessed to go from an enlisted to officer to then be able to get to retire and have enough of a base income that I know I wasn't going to starve when I took the shot at chasing my dream. Um, I've, been, I've been blessed and I would be remiss if I took that and then didn't stand up for what's right. And there's way too many people that get theirs and then they just cover up and don't care about everybody else. And I'm, I'm trying to inspire other people to do that same thing. That's it, man. Y'all just stand up for these fish, stand up for the fishery, stand up for our rights as hunters, fishermen. You know, I, cool. Thank y'all. Now get out here and take some pictures. Good job, bro. Smile, man. Oh, wait. He's laying on. <laughs> it's gonna be like right at the wrong time. Cool, got it. Alright. Jesus. The Jesus. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. 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 Did I say that out with my outside voice? It's already on social media. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just like everybody else. And by only, I say, I say only. It actually is a six out of my Big fish. Big fish. Come on. All right, let's get him in there with the check and then I'll let you <laughs>